Hello everyone, I'm Evren Eryurek. I'm the product director in Google Cloud's data analytics team. Hi everyone, I'm Sanjay Chaudhary. I'm VP of product management at Exabeam. Today we'll be talking about real-time analytics for continuous intelligence. You'll get an opportunity to see how to get started at a very low risk free workshop offers. And we'll have questions and answers with Sanjay on how they built their services on Google Cloud. So let's start with this. Various studies are showing that by the end of 2024, 75% of the enterprises will shift from piloting to operationalizing artificial intelligence, which will drive 400% increase in streaming data and analytics on infrastructures. All this is coming from the data that you're dealing with, either in your IoT devices or your media, databases, wherever this data is. On the right-hand side of the uh, slide, you see the peak of the value that is the highest as the event is happening. So objective is to be able to respond during the short window and get the fastest insight to the right person. That event becomes part of the mountain of knowledge and used later on, but how you respond in that short window is really important for streaming analytics. Building the backbone for this continuous innovation is key. Today's challenges are, well, a lot of these disconnected data, siloed, really uh, not working well together tools, high latency, inelastic situations, whether it's your compute or your storage, whatever, and more importantly, a lot of handholding in these technologies. But our truly unified batch and streaming technologies for continuous intelligence brings you the automated solutions, the insights when you need them and truly elastic, highly managed, truly managed and new for all your digital business models. And we have proven use cases across every industry from healthcare to manufacturing, to retail, to telco, to FinTech. Every one of them have been taking advantage of these technologies and bringing use cases. And later on, we will be talking with Sanjay on what they're doing at Exabeam. These technologies were born out of Google research with over 15 years in production. This is at Google scale. It's real time when you need it, proven at scale at Google scale, and truly unified batch and streaming. Forrester's TI report, a third party, have studied with customers and discovered all these customers have seen 55% developer productivity when they adopt the data flow. Near 50% of infrastructure cost uh, reduction and all of this less than six months of payback time. Massive ROI for your business. Here are some examples from many industries who have adopted data flow and well, how they benefited from it. It's a great example from media customers before data flow, they were not using streaming analytics. And now, almost 50% of all their new jobs built on streaming because that is their job. That's their industry. You can actually see it. And in the financial systems and bank industries, you can actually see the example over there. When they adopted it, they were able to turn around the results much faster for their industries, for their customers. Many to cite in here, thousands of customers, great use cases. These are sponsored and provided with these technologies in the real-time streaming technologies that we brought in from Google's native technologies. You capture the value, you capture the data as you ingest, as you process, under a second. And all these exactly once delivery that you needed for the use cases, apply the insights into your dashboards. Many of you are actually doing these reverse ETLs with ML inferences and achieving continuous intelligences all the time for your businesses. Single implementation to help you cross the bridge from where you are today to where you wanna be. It's very low risk and off the bat, you can actually get 10% reduction on your costs, even if you just start with your, with your batch workloads today. And it is future-proof as you move into the real-time analytics, you can actually see the streaming value and achieve over 50% of cost savings. In the meantime, 
you're actually improving the productivity of all your engineers because there is no retooling. There is no parallel infrastructure. This is truly unified batch and streaming API in one model, highly automated. It is different from Kafka. It is different from Kinesis. It is different from Event Hubs. It's born out of Google research with over 15 years of production scale at Google scale readiness for you. Made them available to easy deployment at scale for your businesses. Thousands of customers are in production today across all industries and many use cases. No ops, truly fully managed by Google so that you can actually focus on your own business and your own use cases. When it comes to data, Google is the leader. It is the industry leader, whether it's the data warehousing or the streaming analytics when it comes to data. The unique industry leading architecture, this Google native technologies from pops up to Dataflow to BigQuery to Vertex AI is built on Google infrastructure. And we are working with every digital leader and transforming every enterprise worldwide. You may be wondering how you can start it. Well, we have free HackFest style workshops. You may be wondering, what is this HackQuest? Well, it's a two hours of content. We will help you demo, provide you deep dives. We will work with your use cases. And whatever the use case might be, if we have hands-on, we'll actually show you how that worked in a different industry. What do you get from it? You demonstrate your own use cases on GCP, access and training to a massive new offering. And maybe you will accelerate one of your pilots that you were thinking about it. And most importantly, it's free. If you're interested in taking advantage of the HackFest, please sign up, contact your uh, reps. This will help you demonstrate your use cases on GCP, get access to training, new offering, accelerate to pilot, and it's free. Many of our customers have taken advantage of it. Let's hear from Sanjay, the VP of Exabeam. Welcome, please tell us a bit about yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Sanjay. I'm VP of Product Management at Exabeam. I'm also responsible for identifying right technology stack for Exabeam cybersecurity platform. Now, talking a little bit about Exabeam, Exabeam is a leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for SIM. We are also a leader in Forrester Wave for security analytics. We have been a leader for last three years in a row one of the unique value proposition of Exabeam and which differentiate us from other vendors is machine learning and behavioral analytics based threat detection and incident response, which allow our customers to understand normal and abnormal behavior across petabytes of data without making any changes to their security tooling. So tell us about your current data strategy and product management at Exabeam. Happy to talk about that. Uh, as you see, Exabeam is running fully serverless capabilities. So we are focused on serverless infrastructure, which includes serverless storage, analysis, ingestion, processing. Now being serverless allows us to focus more on security and less on data, and allows us to deliver high scale, high performance, and, and high availability to our customers with this platform. Exabeam and Google Cloud have enjoyed a great partnership to date. And what does that mean for you and the company? How did Google partner with you? How did it help Exabeam's journey? Yeah, Google Cloud is one of the best place to run big data and analytics workloads. In fact, uh, Google Cloud is powering our cloud scale cybersecurity platform. Google is helping us deliver uh, limitless EPS uh, ingestion. It is also helping us deliver search and detection capabilities on multi-year data and helps us to provide our customers data insights in minutes. So Google Cloud is definitely one of the core components of our platform, helping us deliver great scale and performance to our customers. So we talked about unified batch and streaming and your team truly built that for your business. Yes, yeah. And let's talk about those real-time insights and how you're doing it, how you're taking advantage of it, because your business needs this 
And we're truly uh, thankful that you're actually doing it for all the industries. Yeah, no, I think the data flow is a, is a very unique product. To be honest with you, uh, I was introduced to Apache Beam after learning about Dataflow because I was really intrigued by some of the capabilities we are discussing on this slide. So Dataflow is, is a product which has no other capability matching in the market compared to this product. And I'll talk a little bit about our experience because we have been on this journey for long enough to understand the capabilities and we have compared every other vendor in the market now, first thing you talked about unified batch and a stream. Why is that important? For example, if I write a code which runs on Dataflow integrated with PubSub for real-time uh, processing, I can use the same source code and run on BigQuery for batch jobs. So you don't have to change that uh, program. It, when you write once and you can run it both the streaming and batch. Traditionally, people would have used two separate technologies, probably Spark for your batch ingestion and Flink for your stream ingestion. The other uh, thing which we don't talk a lot about uh, is, is, is reduction in amount of code return. So when my team started doing POC on Dataflow, I asked them to replicate some of the work they were doing on the Spark, and I was surprised. A thousand long line of code was converted into just 100 lines of code with Dataflow. So so this is, this is definitely helping our data science and, and and, and important engineers to spend more time writing efficient code rather than writing a code which is just to manage a Spark clusters. The third thing is machine learning at scale, which is very uh, close to Exabeam's heart. And Dataflow is one of the unique capabilities which allows us to process millions of events per second. Um, no other product can come as close to the performance we have seen in, with, with Dataflow in terms of a scale of processing machine learning jobs. Now, there's a unique uh, situation which is very specific to uh, us is handling late arriving events, right? So when you create a session window um, and you, based on that session, you want to take some decisions and very important events were, are arriving late. They don't arrive in that specific session window. What do you do about it? So Dataflow is one of the unique technologies where you can easily handle these late arriving events and read re-score your models which have been previously scored without these events. So very, very powerful in terms of handling late arriving event. Last but not the least, uh, if you have highly paid data science team members, you don't want to, them to spend 50% of their time babysitting the Spark cluster. This is the right technology which lets our data science team focus on the data science jobs. Awesome, so great to hear, thank you. Well. These were the obvious ones. Let's yeah. talk about not so obvious benefits that you've seen from data flow during your journey. Yeah, I think uh, there, are, there are many not so obvious benefits which uh, uh, I would like to highlight uh, based on our experience with data flow. First thing I would like to talk about the, the what I call the non-functional benefits. Uh, you can take, uh, take an example of configuration. Pushing a configuration to a data flow job is so easy. Error handling, it's have native capabilities to easily handle errors uh, and it smoothly handles those errors. Or local developments where you can run a, a Beam direct runner uh, for local development on Dataflow. But what are the three most important non-obvious benefits? I would say the number one is observability. So when you go inside Dataflow UI, it gives you a full visibility of the Dataflow pipeline, every stage of your pipeline. So you can see at what stage Dataflow is doing what. When you click at any of these nodes, a right-hand side navigation pops up where you can see every metrics related to that processing job, which is really, really unique capability with this product. So observability is definitely on top of my mind. Second thing is cost. Uh, we are a security product uh, developer, so we provide these products to many customers as a SaaS application. So for us, having a linear cost model is very important. What do I mean by linear? If you have used traditional products, you would know that they have certain cost when you're running at a small scale, and the when you go at a higher scale, the cost is, let's say if you're paying uh, for one GB of data processing with the traditional product, $1, when you go to 100, it's not $100, sometimes it's 200, it could be 300 because as your cluster size increases, a lot of nodes in the cluster gets busy managing each other rather than doing your job. And this is where we were really impressed with Dataflow. 
that the cost of processing one GB of data, if it's costing me $1, when the job goes to a terabytes, it's going to linearly cost me $1,000. It's not going to go beyond that linear capacity. Last but not the least is multi-tenancy. So the multi-stream architecture data flow have, which allow me to parameterize every pipeline for every tenant, so which allows me to build a single pipeline and parameterize it and run it differently for different, different tenants. It's really important for us because we would like to offer each of our customers a different machine learning and advanced analytics model and processing capabilities. So these are some of the non-obvious benefits, I would say. Thank you, it was fantastic. And I'm sure a lot out there are wondering in your roles, these leaders who are trying to transform their industries, yep. becoming digital leaders. So what would you recommend? How, do they, how should they approach? What would you say to those leaders? Yep. So being part of uh, Google's customer advisory board gives me access to a lot of large Fortune 500 companies. So I would say there are two schools of thought, especially if you're a large company, any cloud transformation or data transformation journey is going to be long. It's not going to be so fast as we were able to do with Exabeam. Any roadblocks to our growth, we handle it from CEO to every developer at a rapid speed. So we were able to um, go on this journey and finish this journey rapidly. But for larger companies, definitely you have to think about your different, different organization silos and how you bring these shadow teams together. Regardless of size of the company, I have three very important recommendations for anybody thinking about uh, cloud transformation or, or, or doing a database transformation which has huge impact on the company. First is think 10x scale, at least 10x scale. If you're running in your operations at 10 petabytes scale, think about 100 petabytes. Don't go from 10 to 12 or 15. And a good example for our industry is when, if you look at 10 years back, the antiviruses like McAfee and Symantec were sending 10 GB or 20 GB of data to the SIM providers. Today's antiviruses, or I would call them EDR players, like CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1 send 10, 15 terabytes of data per day, and it's pretty normal. So don't get stuck in a technology stack which you have to reinvent every five years. Focus long-term, at least have 10, 10x scale. Second, very controversial, is a lot of data products have been built for on-premise ecosystem. So I will start with Kafka, Spark, MongoDB, um, and Presto, many of these technologies, including Elasticsearch, were built uh, long back for on-premise workloads. Um, so when you bring these technologies on the cloud, you will have to spend a lot of time uh, managing these technologies. So when you're restarting your cloud journey, think about serverless capabilities, think about cloud-native capabilities like BigQuery and Dataflow to start your journey. Last and the most uh, uh, important thing is cost, right? Cloud transformation is not just about massive scale capabilities you can offer to your customers, but you also have to run your business profitably. What I've seen is cost of ownership and time to market. These are very important aspects for, for us as a startup, and cloud products definitely help you with that. Uh, first, no doubt about the time to market, but the cost of ownership, let's take an example of something like Spark, right? When you go to a massive data scale processing pipeline with this Spark, it takes you months to, to mature versus it takes you weeks with Dataflow. So don't ignore the total cost of ownership. Don't ignore your time to market, especially if you're a startup like us. And cloud native products will help you more in that direction. Thank you for everything. Thank you for this rich conversation and your insights and Looking forward to seeing huge, huge success with you, Sanjay. Thank you so much. Great partnership. Thanks.